Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how to create this like old 70s funk sound like you'd hear from like a clavinet. So last time I did the uh, harpsichord sound, and I was trying to change that into a like a clavinet sound, but it was a little bit difficult, but I think I figured it out. So let's listen to it, and then I'll sh show you how I did it. Here we go. So that's the type of sound I'm going to try to get, and I'm going to do this a little bit different than normal. Usually I do it from like the ground up, but here I'm just going to show you how I did it, and we're going to break it down, you know, block by block. So we're just going to go into the edit screen, and this is very similar to what I had last time. So like first let's turn the FX off. Don't need that for now. Let's start turning a lot of this stuff off. Fast filter I don't really need. Pick up one, pick up two. Let's go to the very beginning. We have this drum synthesizer 4 in in 1. And previously what I did was I used this, the oscillator 1. But you look this time I'm using noise 1 here. So it's just white noise, it's not even being filtered. And I'm using that instead of using oscillator one, which is a sine drop. And let's go to the resonator and I'll turn these both on so you can actually hear what they sound like. So if I have the resonator on and let's say I use the oscillator, it sounds like this. That's okay, of course we can filter that, but that's really not what I want. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the noise here. Do a quick A, B, back and forth. Oscillator. Noise. To me, this sounds much more like the sound we're trying to achieve. It actually sounds a little bit more stringy. And to change that, we can, of course, change the length. If you make it shorter, it'll be a little bit more stringy. And if I make it longer, it'll kind of like have a, I don't know, like a, almost like a tearing sound at the end. I'll demonstrate it so you can hear it. I think right there 20 is good and I like to leave the envelope just going straight down linearly. It's really easy. Let's move on from there. Let's look here in the resonator. I'm not doing anything really crazy. It's just the normal resonator. I turned the feedback up to 98. I think everything else is right in the same position. So that's not really where the interesting stuff goes on, I think. The next part here is I have this filter. It's a comb filter. Just like I showed in the previous video, the comb filter can really change the character of it. So I have it here. You can try any one of those you want, and of course you can change the frequency. I found four at zero octaves. That sounded good to me, but of course, feel free to change that if you like. The next thing I did is I have this EQ here. I found this was good. I'll pop it out for you so you can see it a little bit better. What I did was I had these frequencies here, and I thought it sounded better with these on. I'm cutting off a little bit the high end. I thought I used a low pass filter for that. And then here with eight, I just dropped it down because I found like this frequency in here, it was a little bit too stringy and I didn't like that. And I also cut off the low end and I found adding a little bit more mid-range actually makes the sound better in my opinion. So let's listen to that. Now the high pass filter isn't going to make a big difference unless you're playing really low notes, but hopefully you could hear as it was playing the difference between all of these. It really makes a big difference in the character. And you can of course set that however you like. The next thing I did was I used, I wanted to simulate pickup, so I used two more comb filters here. One and two. 
and I blended them using a ratio. So let's take the ratio and just move it all the way to the left side, which is pick up one. And let's move around with that. This time I'm using a constant pitch mode instead of the uh, maybe normal mode, which tracks it by octaves. This one is just, you know, constant. So it'd be in Hertz. I'm going to move around and I'll let you hear the different ones, different comb filters. What I did with this is, you see I have one and two, and at the ratio, I can blend them together. So if you look on the GUI, which I'm not done yet with, but you see here, you can select which one of these, which is selecting which comb filter, and then this A adjustment will adjust the frequency. So you can actually blend them together like this, hopefully. Hopefully you can find whatever ratio and whatever combination works for you. So that's something I added in there. I thought it was cool. The next thing you're probably wondering, how do you get the wah effect? What I did was I just used this fast filter. I turned the analog up a little bit. I had to turn the input down a bit because this gets a little bit loud. I turned the resonance up to 40, but you can actually adjust that on here. And you see here, I use the frequency. I have it in constant mode and I just added a normal envelope here. So I thought like, oh, okay, the attack around 50, decay around 50, or in this case, 55, but you can set it however you want and you can probably set the release however you like. And you can, of course, just adjust the level. I don't know why it's at 88. Maybe I did something wrong. Anyways, and then you can use the depth to determine the actual range, how many hertz it goes up or down. So if I have it here, I'll let you listen to it. <laughs> And then I can adjust the range here. You see like the control, I have it on the right side of the screen here. And you can move the depth up and down. So I can change it here. So by adjusting the frequency, the uh, range of the frequency, and also the resonance, you can get lots of different sounds out of that. You can adjust it however you like. And so there, I was like, ah, this is pretty good. But other thing, I believe the clavinets usually play through an amp. So if you look in the FX section here, I have M Turbo Amp. And I actually had to change this so when this is on, it drops the volume coming out of here. So I have the amp, if you look here, it's this, but in the edit screen, it just looks like a, a slider. And you notice if I slide it, now it's on, the output's zero. If it's off, it's boosted by 10 decibels because that guitar is really gonna, or the guitar amp's really gonna increase the sound too much. And I didn't want it distorting going into the amp. So, First, I have this, the M Turbo amp. I, I use this Midwestern amp I made. I like it. it. Sounds good to me. So this is what it sounds like with it on. So you just have an amp there, and then afterwards I put cabinet in here. You change between these different modes like this, and it'll make it sound like this. And of course you can change all these from the front GUI. 
Uh, I'm not completely done with this yet. I need to add some other things in here, but I think so far it's pretty good. And of course you have some different effects here, which I might change. I think I might take that lo-fi tape out. It doesn't really need that. But with that, you can do lots of interesting things with this, and hopefully this is a convincing enough sound. Uh, I don't know if I can use the word clavinet, so I'm going to call it Chandler Net from now, and hopefully I'll add it soon to M Sound Factory. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any comments you have down below, and check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Till next time, see you.